Now is an exciting time to be alive. Progress is on the horizon for many. Exponential technology and the acceleration of breakthrough science provides hope and an opportunity for all life on this planet to benefit. But for that to be possible, we need to ensure that specific guidelines and principles are written into the development of new technology from the outset, so that each technology meets the criteria to do good, not harm. Technologies cannot simply be understood as neutral tools or instruments. They embody the values of their creators and may unconsciously reinforce systematic patterns of inequality, discrimination and oppression. We need technologies that solve 21st century challenges to move the human story forward for everyone, improving all life of this planet. A development framework is necessary to do so. And that framework is specific design principles which are tailored for the development of each of these exponential technologies. Welcome back to the second Idea Me Soundbite. My name is Stephen Umbrello. I'm the Managing Director at the Institute for Ethics and Emerging Technologies. I'm a researcher at the University of Turin and author of the forthcoming book, Technology Ethics, Responsible Innovation and Design Strategies. In the last episode, we briefly looked at some of the ways that we tend to default to when talking about technologies, the stories that we tell about technology. And more specifically, those are instrumentalism, technological determinism, social constructivism, and finally, interactionalism. We said how the first three tend to have a certain degree of truth, despite the, that they tend to reduce technology to those simple narratives. Instrumentalism says that technology is merely a tool. Technological determinism says that technology is purely determine how we act and how society develops. And social constructivism says the exact opposite of that. But there's certain degrees of truth when you put them together, come to a more nuanced and comprehensive understanding of technology. And that we said was interactionalism. That is technology and society co-construct and co-develop with one another. Technology to a large degree determines how we behave and how we behave between each other, not just between us and technology. And that then also determines how we design technologies, which then in turn impacts how we behave. This interactional stance, if we take this as the starting point, means that we can interact and therefore direct to a certain degree how we design technologies and how those technologies then impact our lives. For this reason, we need to look at design itself. And there are various design strategies that have emerged, but among all these various design strategies, one has taken particular attention in academia and industry, and that's value sensor design. And as its name suggests, it takes values as its core facet. That is what people and groups of people find important in their lives, particularly moral values. Now, how do we actually implement this in the real world? Well, that's becoming ever more important given that exponential technologies like nanotechnology, biotechnology, quantum technologies, and artificial intelligence are having ever more transformative effects on our lives. And for that reason, we need to take steps early on in order to direct those technologies towards greater human flourishing rather than waiting for consequences to emerge as they inevitably will. And adopting a design strategy like value sense of design allows us to at least anticipate some of those unforeseen impacts, as well as leave open potential responses to future generations. Value sense of design says that we need to do conceptual investigations, ask questions like, who are the people impacted, the stakeholders? What are their values? Are there any indirect stakeholders like animals or the environment that may be impacted by these technologies? How will these technologies impact future generations? Will, are we going to try to increase our responsibility for being responsible for others? Or are we going to abdicate our responsibility to future generations to clean up our mess? It also does empirical investigations. It doesn't just ask these conceptual ones. It actually goes out and tries to find those stakeholders, bring them directly into the design space, allow them to participate, try to extract what their values are, at least what they say they are, 
And then we try to actually see what these stakeholders do to see whether their behaviors correspond with what they say that they find important. And not just that, we go on to actual technical investigations. How does the architecture of the system under question, the one we're looking to build, support or constrain those values that we find to be important? This iterative tripartite methodology has proven in the academic literature and in industry to be a great starting point for thinking about how technologies interact with society and therefore how we can interact with those technologies to guide society towards more beneficial ends. In my forthcoming book, I discuss these various narratives. I bring up how value-sensitive design is perhaps the best way to achieve responsible innovation, that is, try to increase human flourishing across multiple generations. And then I actually give a step-by-step -step guide to how engineers and policymakers can co-construct the technology and policy together in order to achieve greater human flourishing over time. In the next episode of the Idea Me Soundbites, and in the final episode, we're going to discuss the application of values in design to a transformative technology, one that has garnered a lot of popular attention, and that's artificial intelligence. After the third episode of the Idea Me Soundbite, we're going to have an expert interview in which a longer form interview with myself in which we'll discuss these in greater depth.